Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Good Round Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, and um, we're going to leave the A to Z of whiskies for just one week because it's a lovely, warm, sunny Sunday afternoon and um, it's gin time, you know, it's perfect weather for a gin, you know. Um, even thought about doing this, uh, or filming this episode of the, the show in the garden, but uh, what with um, next door's dog continually barking and two doors down playing some god awful house music, I didn't think it was kind of quite going to work. So we're back indoors. So, so why gin? Um, well, I picked up a couple of these. These couple of rather fabulous looking bottles um, fairly recently. Um, they kind of intrigued me with regards to the the botanicals they were using. They also kind of intrigued me with the packaging. I mean, you know, both are really superb looking bottles. Um, but as we know, that doesn't mean everything. Uh, it's basically the juice that's inside the bottle that counts. So hopefully um, it will be quite interesting. And so I teamed it up with um, you know four other Scottish um, gins and. Um, I think three of them, four of them are actually distilled in Scotland, a couple are a little bit more amb ambiguous and um, the only links they appear to have to Scotland is the fact that the company um, exists in Scotland. So, uh, you know, okay, so it's, it's, this gin malarkey is a bit fluid but um, it doesn't really matter whether it's Scottish gin, Irish gin, German gin, whatever, you know, it's basically as long as it tastes really good. So. Uh, um, so I'm not going to waffle too much, I'm just going to introduce obviously uh, each of the gins that we're going to taste and uh, the botanicals that seem to be uh, the length of a, an entire page in some cases, so um, we'll just uh, just introduce our own sort of line -up. Right, okay, so we're going to start with uh, this one called uh, the Rock Rose Gin. And I mean, really lovely sort of ceramic looking bottle. Re that kind of drew my attention, it has to be said. It's also what drew my attention was the fact that this is, you know, a real artisanal uh, distillery called, uh, called the Dunnet Bay Distillery. And um, they make everything small batches and um, bottle it at 41.5%. And the, the guys behind it, uh, or the husband and wife behind it, seem to be really into their gin. And that, like I said, they use what appears to be some really interesting botanicals. Um, and that includes um, juniper, obviously, uh, as gin has to have uh, juniper, uh, both Bulgarian and Italian juniper. Uh, they also use uh, Rhodia rose, which is some kind of rose that grows on the rocks uh, around the distillery, which I forget where it actually is. And if I can see the name and carry on to it, no, I can't. Um, but it, <laughs> apparently this rose was harvested by the Vikings and used for um, potions and lotions and all that kind of stuff, so could be interesting. Uh, they also use uh, sea buckthorn, uh, rowan berries, uh, blaeberries, uh, cardamom, coriander seed and verbena. So quite an interesting blend of traditional and not so traditional um, uh, botanicals, which quite a number of these actually do as well so and I'm always on the lookout for, for interesting uh, gins with a, with a bit of a twist so I'm hoping this is going to be really nice so uh, the second gin we'll be looking at is the um, Karoon gin this sample comes from the uh, 2015 World Gin Awards and um, uh, it is uh, no, a cla it is a Scottish gin, it is distilled in Scotland at the Balmenach Distillery uh, and again it's a combination of um, traditional um, uh, botanicals, um, six I believe including juniper, with five um, what they call Celtic um, <laughs> uh, botanicals which includes again rowan berry, heather, bog myrtle, dandelion and something called cool blush apple. So I uh, have stocked this particular one for quite a while and so I, I do quite uh, quite like this particular gin so uh, it'll be nice to see how it sort of like matches with uh, with the rock rose. Uh, incidentally bottled at 41.8 so we're basically going from the lowest ABV up to the highest that's just how I thought it would be uh, wise to uh, arrange this tasting. Um, third one we'll be looking at is um, called the Darnley's View Spiced, bottled at 42.7. Uh, Darnley's View is a brand owned by Weems, the independent bottling company, um, and it is called Darnley's View because, <laughs> and some of these have some really interesting sort of background, you know, whether you, what 
choose to believe or buy into all the uh, um, the background waffle is obviously up to you but uh, uh, apparently this was named after some chap called Lord Darnley who married uh, Mary Queen of Scots and they first met at uh, Weems Castle now fair enough and uh, this doesn't appear I don't know what the base spirit is uh, it doesn't appear to be distilled in Scotland but distilled in London um, so I'm guessing it's distilled at the Thames Distillery uh, down in London which seems to do most of the contract gin distilling so um, again some interesting botanicals juniper obviously um, classic ones like nutmeg ginger cumin coriander seed uh, cinnamon cassia bark grains of paradise interesting um, cloves and angelica root now um, they call it spiced but you know the, to me there doesn't seem to be anything particularly out of the ordinary if they'd used you know, chili peppers or chili seeds or whatever then you know maybe okay you could call, call it spiced but anyway um, so that's why the spiced one is not coming at the end because I don't know anyway um, the next one we'll be looking at the fourth one we'll be looking at is this baby um, the Daffy's now it's a bit, of, a bit of an odd name for a gin and apparently Daffy is the goddess of gin I don't know I must admit I can't find any 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 kind of relevance or any kind of note to uh, the fact that there ever was a, a gin goddess but there you go um, <laughs> part of the reason I kind of attracted to it is that doesn't that label look like Michelle Pfeiffer I mean no, the guy that uh, that did this label certainly must have had her in mind when uh, when he um, painted that and um, but anyway that's that again is probably by the by so you want to know exactly what's in it and if is it any good well well we'll get on to it. is it any good in in due course but um, this is uh, another uh, Scottish gin only purely by dint of the fact that the company that uh, um, well, they don't even distill it, but the company that uh, produces it, should we say, for want of a better word, is a Scottish company. Uh, it's basically French um, wheat grain spirit, uh, which is then redistilled in England, probably at the Thames Distillery, I would imagine. Um, and they use um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, juniper, coriander seed, cassia bark, and this is the twist, um, which I thought sounded quite interesting, Lebanese mint. Yeah, could be interesting. Um, uh, they also use lemon peel, angelica and orris. So again, fairly sort of straightforward traditional um, botanicals, but you know, with this minty twist. So, yeah, could be interesting. Uh, right, now, and on to the next one, which is the, the botanist gin, bottled at 46%. Now, uh, as you know, botanist gin is created by Brooklady and has 31 botanicals. I mean, talk about overkill I mean do you need 31 botanicals of which 22 are native to Ireland so Ireland Isla <laughs> 22 are native to Ireland honestly I haven't even had a drink yet good god um anyway so the full list and whether whether we will be able to pick up all of these in the gym of course god only knows but uh the full list includes angelica root uh, apple mint apple mint is birch leaves bog myrtle leaves cassia bark chamomile, cinnamon bark, coriander seeds, creeping thistle flower, well great name huh, um, elderflower, gorse flower, hawthorn flower, wild isla juniper berries, uh, lardy's bed straw flowers, I mean great name, I mean whoever came up with that one for it, go, yeah I'll call that flower lardy's uh, uh, bed straw, okay, um, <laughs> We haven't finished yet, we're carrying on. Uh, there's lemon balm, lemon peel, licorice root, meadow sweet, orange peel, orris root, peppermint leaves, mugwort leaves, red clover flowers, tansy, whatever tansy is, uh, thyme leaves, water mint leaves, white clover and wood sage leaves. Whew, that is one hell of a list of botanicals and um, it's proven to be incredibly popular. It sells, sells quite uh, quite quickly every month when we get stock in um, so it's obviously that a number of you really like this gin so you know and I've tasted it on several occasions so it'll be interesting to taste it again you never need an excuse to taste anything and the final one we'll be looking at is bottled at 47% and is uh, called the Bow Superior um, now again doesn't seem to the information I could 
dig out, doesn't seem to suggest that it's distilled in Scotland, doesn't actually seem to sort of um, say where it's actually distilled. Um, the company is based in Stirling and the, the, the gin is named after some chap called Professor Franz de la Beau, who apparently was the inventor of gin back in 1658. Could well be. Um, again, you know, doesn't really matter whether what the uh, the background for the actual gin is. Is, is it nice? Um, again, a uh, fairly straightforward bunch of botanicals uh, includes um, <coughs> excuse me, juniper, coriander, cardamom, angelica, almond, orris, uh, cassia bark, licorice, orange, lemon, cubub berry whatever that is, and Grains of Paradise. So again, should be quite interesting. And this sample came from the uh, 2015 uh, World Gin Awards, which um, well, I rate that quite highly in actual fact. Um, I forget to go and think, uh, remember which one went on to win, but neither uh, um, here nor there really, isn't it? So uh, um, probably about time I stopped talking and um, catch you some gin. Right, okay, so let's kick off this tasting with the rock rose. Let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? That's a nice nose. Pungent, slightly smoky, plenty of juniper. Greeny sort of spices. Obviously the cardamom is coming through quite strongly. Getting a little bit of perfumed um, rose petal note. Um, which I'm guessing is the um, uh, Rodea Rose. Um, it's quite an oil, not, oil is not the right word, it's quite a heavy spirit. Uh, it's certainly got plenty of almost a wheaty kind of character underneath it, but it's got a lovely freshness with it as well. Hints of, uh, of, of darker spices, coriander is certainly noticeable, as is a little bit of cassia bark. That little bit of citrus is just giving it a bit of a lift. It's you know, quite, like I say, quite, quite a, a heavy spirit, quite, quite spicy, and um, but really nicely balanced and quite smoky as well. Balance. Kicks off quite delicately in actual fact. Soft, very subtle, juniper led. Spices kind of start to creep in on the, on the mid palate with the coriander seed, the cassia bark, and then whoa, get that sort of amplified spice finish as the alcohol suddenly go, wakes up and goes, oh, I'm alcoholic. Um, and uh, the citrus kicks in as well, and it's got mm, really quite, not bitter. Um, get, I'm certainly getting the cardamom um, coming through on the finish, and it's the rose kind of has a sort of more in the aftertaste than than uh, uh, up front of the palate. But oh, that finish is really nice. It's got a real nice kick. And whether I, I would want to actually put tonic water with that or not, I don't actually know. I fear it's probably not quite powerful enough, um, but then I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not an aficionado of G&T. As you know, I prefer my G without any tea. Um, but that's actually really nice. I really enjoyed that. That's 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 quite pleasant. Right, okay, moving swiftly on to the Karoon. Let's see what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Now, that is really smoky. Um, quite starchy as well it's almost you would have thought that the, the, the base material was possibly a sort of a, a potato vodka or, or a potato based spirit because it has that real starchiness to it fleshy full certainly getting the cool blush apple with that kind of not necessarily appley uh, aroma but that kind of thick kind of I suppose if you kind of mulched up apple, you know, like for an apple sauce, you know, and you smell it and you've got that kind of thick apple-y kind of smell. Uh, that certainly has it, so a lot of smoke, 
a little bit of juniper, a touch of berry possibly, a little bit of a little bit of spice. Um, that's that's really really nice nose. Palette. Quite sweet, creamy, soft. Seems to be more about the actual spirit rather than the botanicals. Again, it has that kind of fleshy, apple-y kind of character and a little bit of juniper, but I'm quite surprised because I don't remember it being quite like this. I don't remember it being um, so subtle in the uh, in the botanicals. Nice, crisp, minerally, almost hard kind of finish to it. Um, almost like you know a Highland whiskey, for example, uh, which is probably because they use. Uh, I would guess they use sort of like local water to uh, Balmenac, and uh, I think they have a spring uh, near the distillery, if memory serves me correctly, about the distillery. But but it's subtle, and, and the apple seems to be the sort of like the um, the, the kind of focal point, but it doesn't really taste apple. -y. Like I said, it has this more kind of fleshy apple -y kind of character. It's a little bit herbal, a little bit spicy. Certainly, the aftertaste has got more of the drier spices in. Um, so, but yeah, I, I like it. I like the. Excuse me. Oh, doesn't seem to like me. <laughs> um, I, I like, like I said, when when I taste a gin or a vodka or something like that, I like to know, at least get an inkling of what the you know some spirit character, not just you know it's got lots of botanicals. So, uh, in that aspect I like it because it has some you know, spirit character. I think the botanicals could, I don't know, they just could have done with being more focused um, but maybe it's just you know it's a batch bottling like everything else so maybe it's just this particular batch I don't know so but you know still you know a very very interesting gym. Right okay so on to the Darnley's View Spice let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we? It's subtly spiced. I mean, there's some 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 nice warm spice, some um, cassia, bit of coriander, a little bit of ginger coming through. Um, some nice, uh, quite a lot of licorice in actual fact that I'm getting. Um, again, it's got got a, a good spirit base. Um, it's again feels quite quite barley led, a little bit of smokiness, robust, mmm, that's a, that's a full on, full on gin, as we said, I mean, whether I'd really sort of call it spiced or not is of course another matter, but it's got a slight sort of earthiness to it, pal. Nice spicy kick on the finish. Again, soft, creamy, a little bit of juniper up front. Some nice spirit character, um, and yeah, some some nice spices there. As like I said, that on the nose, there's quite a bit of licorice, a bit of ginger, a bit of orris. Hmm. Little bit of citrus possibly, but you know, it's 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 a lovely full body gin um, with. With yeah, some some nice spice, I guess. Right, okay, we're on the Daffy Duck. No, sorry, <laughs> the, the, the goddess Daffy. <laughs> um, yeah, not Daffy Duck. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, let's see what those goods are sent, shall we? Again, subtly smoked, uh, quite spicy in actual fact. There is a bit of mintiness underneath. It's not kind of... I kind of expect it to be in-your-face mint, you know, real OTT mint uh, when I read about it. Cause, um, but it's not the case. Again, it's sort of like I'm getting a lot of spirit character, a lot of smoky spirit. 
definitely wheaty. It's got that wheaty kind of character to it. You know, that sort of full, almost um, biscuity kind of character. Um, bit of spice. Yeah, I'm certainly getting some, some coriander. Certainly getting a little bit of orris. Some citrus as well. Hmm. It's nice, it's got a lovely warming spice kind of character to it. It's certainly got, I mean it's bottled at what, 43.4? Uh, and it's certainly got some some punch to it. Um, hmm. Oh. It's quite fresh up in actual fact. Lightly creamy, less wheaty, although I'm certainly getting some wheaty notes kind of coming through on the finish. Again, quite subtle uh, on the um, on the mint. Some nice spices, some cassia bark, a little bit of citrus, a um, little bit of bittering the spices on the uh, on the aftertaste. Um, like I said, it's certainly got a bit of power to it. Certainly got some weight to it. Um, and yes, I like it. Like I say, the botanicals again are quite subtle. Certainly got some spirit character. Um, and um, yeah, the mint is not too OTT. I mean, it's probably quite easy. I mean, it's lovely minty freshness. Uh, I mean, you could probably use it as a mouthwash. <laughs> That's a good one for you. You know, brush your teeth in the morning and uh, have a swell out with Daffy. <laughs> that sounds a bit rude. Um, <laughs> moving swiftly. Right, okay, so we're now going to take a look at the botanists. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? Now that is complex. That's spicy and herbal. I'm definitely getting some coriander. Some cinnamon. Lightly floral as well. It's got a quite... This is a very very complex gin and I suppose it's not surprising considering the amount of botanicals but I guess at the end of the day it's not necessarily about how much you chuck into it. Um, the spirit is still noticeable, it's got a, a, a soft rounded barley, slightly smoky barley kind of character. Certainly getting some leafy herbal notes, some licorice, again like I said the spices, the cassia bark, the cinnamon, a little bit of chamomile coming through on the top there. I mean, it's it's really really nicely balanced. You're certainly getting the, the weightier spices, and then above that, you've got the floral, um, herbal, um, and flowery kind of character. Palette. That's a lovely spirit. Soft, creamy, opens with the floral notes, a little bit of juniper. The elderflower especially I noticed. Um, got a little bit herbal on the middle, a bit of bog myrtle, a bit of chamomile. And then the spice kicks in at the end with the, um, the coriander, the cassia. And a little bit of citrus as well. That is really, really complex uh, gin. Um, Lovely freshness, I think 46% kind of suits it really well. Uh, it certainly seems to sort of like balance up all the heavier spice, spice notes. Um, oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's a very, very good gin. And finally, we're on to the Beau Superior bottles at 47%. Excuse me. Oh, repeating on me. Uh, right, let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? Quite subtle. Smoky juniper. A little bit of coriander, a little bit of barky spice. 
very spicy in actual fact, very warm, rich spice. Again, underneath there is some spirit character. That little, I'm guessing it's a, a barley based spirit because it certainly has that, that barley kind of character to it. Get, certainly get some, some licorice root, some ginger. Hmm, that is a lovely spicy, uh, probably more, more spicy than the, the um, Darnley's View spice, to be honest with you. Um, lovely, full character. I mean, certainly, obviously, being bottled at 47% certainly helps. Um, about. Mm. Very junipery, junipery. God, I can't speak now after all this gin. <laughs> um, yeah, this has probably got the most juniper character on the palate than any of them, I think. Really fresh, citric, but again some lovely warming spices coming through the, um, the cardamom, the coriander. Mm, lovely, but a really dry finish. Um, certainly the alcohol is kind of um, giving it that kind of dryness um, and I imagine that would work really really nicely with with, with a gin and tonic I think, it, I think a little bit of sweetness would certainly sort of like work really nicely with that because it's a very dry finish to it very spicy and earthy and mm, a little bit of berry coming through now which is, could well be the cubed berry but I don't know but it's got a sort of berry kind of character but um, Mm. Yeah, nice, nice gin to finish with, I think. Right, okay, so let's sum this little tasting up. Um, I don't think it's been really interesting. Um, I think it seems to me that gin is certainly having its uh, moment in the sunshine, shall we say. Um, there seems to be a new gin popping up practically every other week. I mean, a few years ago it seemed to be a new vodka every other week, but it's now gin. You know, you know you're getting... Um, quite a number of them with interesting botanicals and certainly I think um, the rock rose has a, a really interesting character I love the sort of the artisanal character of it I if I was going to argue maybe it could do done with a little bit more punch on the mid palate uh, a little bit more alcohol possibly because it's very subtle um, but I think it's really nicely made uh, and you certainly get all the kind of character of um, the, the botanicals coming through on it so yeah nice good packaging you know think it's think that will probably sell pretty well and from what I was reading online it certainly has done um, the um, Karoon yep yeah, lovely gin again really subtle on the botanicals probably could have done with maybe a little bit more intensity from the botanicals but then you know it has a lovely spirit character a lovely freshness um, quite a sort of granity kind of finish so again yeah nice nice gin um, the Darnley's View Spiced, yeah, well, yeah, again, pleasant, um, yeah, nice, nice balance of botanicals again, you know, soft, um, slightly smoky, really, really quite pleasant, you know. Um, uh, Daffy then, well, yeah, Daffy's alright, you know, um, I'd certainly have a drink with her, <laughs> um, you know, the I thought I think the, the 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 only thing that was going through my mind is possibly the mint might be too heavy-handed for it and might just kind of obliterate everything else. But I think they've done a nice job with that. Nicely subtle use of uh, of the uh, of the mint. Um, certainly plenty of uh, other botanical character coming through, and you know nice nice freshness, nice intensity. So um, so yeah, really good. Um, Botanist, well, I think the botanist is probably the standout gin, it has to be said. I mean, and it's not because it's got 30 odd different botanicals in, it just has a lovely complexity. It is a really well balanced, interesting, complex gin. Uh, and it's not all about the botanicals, there's certainly some, some real spirit character underneath all of that. And I just think that it's just a lovely all round gin. So. Um, and um, we haven't finished yet. We'll <laughs> on to the bow superior again. Yeah, pleasant, um, quite spicy in places. Um, you know, no, you know, nothing really sort of mega outstanding about it. But yet, you know, a, a really nicely crafted gin, nicely put together. Um, classic, almost, I guess you would say. Um, so yeah, really nice. Um, 
Yeah. There you have it. That's that's this week's episode of the show. Uh, certainly, I think there's one or two two gins here that uh, you know really are worthwhile checking out if you're into your gins. Um, certainly, a number of them, the ones we stock already, and um, uh, although we don't stock the daffies at the moment, I probably will do because I think that was that was really nice. So, um, so yeah, there you have it. That's um, this week's uh, episode of the show in um, a nutshell as they say and uh, so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you'll you know, get yourself uh, one of these interesting gins um, preferably you know, buy them from, from us um, before I do go uh, just a quick plug uh, latest episode of the Whiskey Magazine is out uh, this is issue 128 uh, as per usual my tasting notes from the session uh, are in uh, starting on page 64, some interesting um, uh, whiskies that we tasted, including the editor's choice this week goes to the MacMyra Moment Solskin, uh, which is very, very good. And as you remember, not so long ago, I did a, an episode of the show on MacMyra. Um, and um, all I can say is, Alwyn, how in God's name did you rate that Texas bourbon? That's all I can say, Garrison Brothers bourbon. Oh. Anyway, you know, I know that the Americans whinged about uh, about the way we scored their whiskies, but I can tell you that from the next episode of the Whiskey Magazine, uh, uh, issue uh, 129, um, there are actually some very good American whiskies. Like like I said, I was I was almost out of spike and I sort of like marked them at 6.9 or something like that, but they were just too good for that. And um, it does goes to show that America can produce some great whiskey when uh, they give it some time in the cask. And there you go. That's it. Won't say any more. No more. No. Bye bye.